Let's talk about how to afford luxury in 2022. And the reason why I decided to do this video is because I see that prices are getting higher and I'm not just talking about Chanel or whatever, not like luxury things, but even food, gas, healthcare, whatever, name it. Everywhere in the world, inflation rates are high and everything is getting more expensive. And at the same time, some people might be getting more money, but some people might be suffering in their business or in their professionals if they're, you're a liberal worker or even unsure if they will be able to keep their jobs. And everyone is just not sure how to feel about this year, how it will be. It would be another health not nightmare or everything will be just fine. Insecurities are rising. We learn not to take anything for granted. At the same price, prices are rising due to the same reason. So how can we afford luxury in 2022? And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share how I do this little plan every year and how it can help you. I've seen a lot of videos about how I afford luxury and basically Everyone's talking about how they work hard and they're good at saving. And yes, of course, I will mention those things about picking where you're going to spend and also about improving your revenue. But most importantly, how to actually do it, how to make a plan, stick to a plan and make your dreams happen. So I hope you enjoy it. My name is Barbara. If you're new here, welcome. If you're just coming back, I missed you. <laughs> so let's go. The first thing I want to talk about is debt. I hope you're not in debt, but if this is the case, please ignore everything that I'm saying about saving for luxury or investments or even traveling and just save to get out of debt, especially right now with interest rates going up because of the inflation right at least most part of the world this is happening so do use this plan to save to pay out your debt and then you can set you can go ahead and do the plan for luxury or traveling or investments like long-term savings so yes so the first thing things i want to talk about is you need to know how much you make. I don't earn a salary, so I understand that sometimes this is hard. Actually, I, now I do earn a salary, but for the longest time I wasn't because I'm an entrepreneur and I have three business. And from this three business, I only get a salary from one right now. So to, from a long... So for the past years I've been even either investing in my companies so yes I know it's hard so if you're an employee if you know like if you have a set salary every month this is easier for you if somehow you're younger or even older and someone gives you an allowance you know how much you're gonna have it every year every month but if you're self-employed or entrepreneur this must be hard so the first thing that I would start is by setting this budget on like to set your budget the first thing I'm gonna tell you is to make a realistic approach to how much you will make each month that it will be 95% sure that this you can make it of course, if this was the case, I would be making goals to earn more. So let's say I know that every month I can make at least $3,000 in my business for me or in my self-employment. But I would make goals like, but I want to make f like four in the first trimester and then I want to go up to five, whatever. Just make your plans, but stick to realistic for budgeting, but do have goals to increase your revenue. And also, you see how much it changes on your budget to spend if you increase your revenue. 
So it's even more motivating. So the second thing I do is I decide my priorities for the year. So my revenue now, my set of revenue comes from a salary from one company, from two companies. One company, I don't have any salary yet, it's a new one. And I have like small gains from influencer because I basically don't do it anymore in Brazil. I don't know. That's why I decided to start this channel in English. I don't feel as connected to my audience here. And I think, I don't know, I just love the community, the English speaking community in YouTube and how you can talk to people everywhere. And I felt to shut down talking to only people in my country, even though it's a big country, it's a very diverse country. So yes, I don't know. I'm in a poll, so I'm not doing many influencers, influencing jobs or whatever. I actually was not never one to take a lot of jobs but whatever so sometimes i'll do i'll have some revenue as an influencer i have some revenue from my portuguese youtube channel i have revenue from my investments and i have like here and there revenues i don't know sometimes like i'll sell a bag or whatever so from my investment, whatever comes from revenue from my investment, it doesn't go this year, it won't go automatically automatically to the investment account, we'll get there. So basically, I'll do this plan set setting only with my sure revenue, which is my salary from my companies, and then whatever comes over extra, than this, it will follow the same rules, but I do this with what I'm sure I'll have. So the first thing I do is I set everything that I must pay every month. And that's like things in our house. For example, my gym membership is charged every month in my accounts. I know I have to pay it and I wouldn't cancel it and it's a monthly thing like i cannot pay one month and pay the other month because it's an annual plan so that's something like i can't run away from at least until october or whatever because that's when i like signs again so yes so these maybe something in your apartment costs with the car gas whatever so this is the things that you must spend spend every month and i did like sum it up and my this now is 15% of my budget so 15% of my such stone earnings so 50% will be directly to these accounts so what I do is I set in my bank account you can make goals I don't know if you can do this in your bank but some of them have like goals that you can save to and some of them might have like saving accounts, the name, and you can save, like save for this, save for that. Most banks have this nowadays, I think. If my bank in Brazil have it, I'm sure yours have it. So there's like a savings with like obligatory spending. And that's where 15% of all the money that I receive goes to. And then I have a savings for what I call my day-to-day -day accounts. And that's if I do want to go out for lunch, if I'm going to order food at my job, if at the office, if I want to go to the pharmacy, the drugstore, small buyings, like a pocket money, but it's not really pocket money because that's also 15% of all my earnings. So we already have 30%. And that I just leave it in my account. It's there. And I know how much I have to spend in a month. This also accounts for short trips. If I'm going somewhere by the weekend, if I'm going out at night, even if I decided to buy something at Zara, this is where it comes from. So that's 15%. The next thing that I do have is a saddle for long-term investment. So long-term investment is something that I save and maybe like if I'm gonna buy an apartment or something that I'll keep investing. So I wouldn't buy a car with that money because for me, a car will depreciate it and devalue. 
So it's not a smart investment, but I would buy maybe like a house, something that could invest and no. In case you're wondering, Birkins and Kelly's do not count. This is a long-term investment. I don't know, it just some more conservative investment <laughs> approach. So that money will be invested. Sometimes what I do is I pick stocks. Sometimes I do this by buying debt, like country debt, how do you call it in Brazil? How do you call it in the US? Like treasury bonds? Treasury bonds, yes, I'm sorry. I did work with that, but now I don't remember the name. So treasury bonds, something safer, some, sometimes stocks, sometimes, I don't know, um, funds, like real estate funds. But right now I'm mostly on stocks, treasury, and even crypto. So yeah, it's not a big investment that I have. I don't have a large investment sum right now because I did invest in three companies in the past three years but it's there and i'm building it again and 25 percent of my earnings goes to debt and whatever whenever i have earnings from this investment i will divide the same way and that's it 25 percent left this year this is new i never did uh and, I'm, and, not, and not never yes i think i never did a uh, separate savings for traveling then for shopping and this is what I'm doing right now so I'm keeping 20% that's pretty high 20% of my savings to travel just because traveling for me right now is twice the price that it was before the pandemic so our currency in Brazil I earn in my local currency but our currency in brazil is hell and it has devalued in the last years actually it's been devaluing from like five six seven years to today but it's very devaluable and when beforehand where i could just say oh let's go and just go right now it's better to have a plenty mostly because i like to stay at very nice hotels i'm picky about hotels <laughs> For me, half the trip's the hotel. I like to fly comfortably, so yes. So I do have to save. I do prefer to plan for trips. And we haven't been traveling as much. I used to travel every month or every two months internationally. And now, for example, last year we did three trips only. One being this one in Uruguay, which is quite close. And one to Egypt and one to Mexico. Mexico to Lung. so we weren't being able because of close brothers to travel and now I do want to travel a lot this year so I do prefer to have a savings for that so that's why it's a high amount for traveling so we have 15 obligatory expenses 15% day-to-day -day expenses 25% investment and 20% we have for trips traveling and it what leaves me with 25 percent those 25 percent percent goes to more luxury products shopping buying and i just keep it in an account i just do the same thing the goals and i'll keep saving it and deciding what's my priority to get so let's see we have like maybe i want to buy jewelry which i'm quite obsessed with I want a new one of this this is a 1.5 carat solitaire earrings I think I want a smaller one for here so yeah for example I do want generally this year if you want a wish list this year yes let's do a wish list I'm not gonna even make you comment here but do tell me if it's a good idea so or if i prefer like a new bag i'll just follow my priorities at the time but keep saving for whatever i wanted 
and if my priority is getting something that is more expensive but I do also want something that is less expensive I won't buy the less expensive first just because I already have the money and I don't have for the bigger expense so I will set my priorities and see no this is what I want first and I'll save until I can buy it so this is how my plan for 2022 and you can do the same you can not have a traveling savings and maybe put more to your future in investment or you want to spend more right now in shopping you might have bigger expenses like sets obligatory expensive so you might need to commit more to that or you might have none maybe you're like a teen living with your parents or maybe your significant other is responsible for paying the bills that you're like all, all your bills whatever doesn't matter then you don't have to have this so the important thing is to set everything to your reality and be realistic don't fall like don't be dreaming about that be realistic what you can do what you can don't be like oh ideally it would be that no how much i really need to pay my obligatory expenses how much i really need for my pocket money you see that i have a lot and that's because i know sometimes i won't be able to have time to cook and i'll have to order food i know that i'm a drugstore freak like I know that I need this money. I know that I'll have a lot of short weekend trips like to visit my parents or my husband parents, whatever. So I know I need this. So set this and then you can plan what you're gonna do with the extra money. And the last thing about this that I wanna say is if 80% or 90% of your revenue is still for obligatory expenses and day-to-day -day expenses, don't be frustrated or sad but do make a wise decision of what you want to do with the 10 and 20 percent because it will grow together and if you don't do it now like trust me trust me i know so many people that earn much more than i and they don't have like much more than me like let's say four times more than me and they never have they never get to do the things they want they never get to travel to whatever they want or they never get to buy the things they want the expensive things because they just spend it poorly so if you don't learn how to manage your money when your extra money is 50 bucks you won't be able to manage when it's five thousand let's say so don't overlook this even if you think, oh, it's not even enough to save, it's always enough to, enough to save. And the last thing I want to say is, if I don't spend all the money on my day-to-day -day account, if somehow there's money left on my day-to-day -day account, I will just decide what I want to do with it. So it will either go to travel, shopping, or investments. It depends how I feel it, how I feel. Mostly, I try to divide in investment and either shopping or traveling. Like, so I have something for the future and something for short term or medium term. But that's how I do it. And whatever that I have that is new income, like, I don't know, maybe YouTube earnings from my other channel or whatever, whatever money drops in my account that I, it was not counted for in my budget will get divided equally until the end of month if i have money left in some account like the first two accounts obligatory expenses or day-to-day -day expenses i can choose where i want it to go and i think it's pretty smart because i'm in control i have a lot of i i have a bit of everything because i know some people my like not buy lunch not go out for dinners or lunch or whatever to save money for a bag that's not me i can't be like that i don't see the point like for me for my lifestyle one of the things that i enjoy i understand if other people prefer it but for me i don't see the point because i'm someone who like the little luxuries this for me is also i, I feel luxury i feel happy i feel as fulfilled 
I wouldn't be happy if I had all the bags in the world and not money to travel or go out. If I had to be counting dollars like each cent that I spend to buy a bag, I would not buy the bag. I would prefer to live more carefully, more chill. So that's why for me it's important to have money for traveling, to have a decent amount of money free in my day-to-day account and also plan for the future. I wish I could save more for the future, but I also want to enjoy life right now while I'm young and still childless and happily married, you know? So I think that's a vision that makes sense for me, but you can set this your way. I'd love to know if you do this, if you do some kind of planning, even if just like budgeting like I do, because I'm also, even though I'm a very numerical person, I'm like math queen, spreadsheet queens. For my expenses, I don't do it because I don't think it feels... Of course, I do have everything that I have to pay and whatever, but I don't log everything that I spend, every little dollar that I spend, just because I, I don't... It doesn't feel nice. Like, it feels... It would bring me anxiety but i'm also very responsible so i said this and i do it the reason why how i can do it is because the moment money even if it's 10 bucks that drops in my account that i wasn't expecting for it will be divided the way that i plan for so that's my last tip once you set your goals and your budgets any money any money if you find five bucks in the street just put it in your account and divide exactly how you plan it and there is no way you can make this not work it will work and yes that's my plan i hope you like it that's how i do it if you want to understand what i do i can do a video about it i'm not sure if you will be interesting there's not i don't know but i could make it if you want to know more about me and what are my business how i started them what are what I studied in college and after and where I've worked before. I can do a video about that so you can understand better my background. So I'm going to leave you to that. I hope you like it. See you on the next one. Bye bye.